Okay, uh, my name is uh, Will Pinchek, and this is a learning byte on uh, configuring uh, bidirectional forwarding detection for LDP signaled MPLS LSPs. So we'll start out with a, uh, a short overview of what actually um, happens with BFT, uh, BFD for uh, LDP signaled LSPs, and then we'll do a short demonstration on how to configure it. Uh, it's expected that if you want to uh, know the details of BFT, including all the timers and protocol exchanges, uh, if you want to do a deep dive into how BFD works, you would either look into one of these two specifications. You'd look at uh, RFC 5880, which is a base specification for, for BFD, and then uh, a later RFC uh, 5884 that is specifically for MPLS LSPs. Um, so I just do a, a brief overview of the operation of it for MPLS LSPs, and then I'll just uh, show you how to configure it. Um, so when it comes to BFD uh, for MPLS LSPs, when it comes to LDP signaled LSPs, that's what we have here. Here's our topology, R1 through R4, R4 being the egress for this LSP. Here are the labels assigned along the path of the LDP signaled LSP. Um, uh, uh, if you read uh, RFC 5884, you'll learn that uh, the BFD is bootstrapped um, uh, by using a, uh, MP an MPLS ping, the pings uh, that the same MPLS pings that are defined in RFC 4379. So it will be R1 that you will configure for B uh, 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 OAM over LDP MPLS LSPs using BFD. It'll, you only have to make the configuration on R1. R1 will initiate the sending of an MPLS ping. Here's the MPLS header. Uh, uh, this is this is a, a look at the packet that's being sent from R1 to R4 while it's on this link. Here we see the MPLS header, obviously with the MPLS label of 10,000, the one that was assigned here for this LSP. And there will be an echo request to R4. R4 and this is what will uh, the echo request will look like. It'll have a source address of R1. It'll have a destination address of 127.0064, uh, which is different than RSVP, um, the RSVP pings that use a 127.0.0.1. Uh, the destination port will be 3503, and it will also contain R1's BFD local discriminator for this BFD session that we're trying to bootstrap. R4 will then respond with a BFD control packet that is not encapsulated in MPLS. Notice no MPLS encapsulation for this. R4 will send this to R1 using a source address of R4, a destination address of R1. Uh, it'll have a destination UDP destination port of 3784, and it will contain both R1 and R4's discriminator. It will be the fact that we've exchanged discriminators that we can now consider this session up, and now we can exchange BFD control packets. R1 will send BFD control packets over the MPLS LDP signaled uh, label switch path using the MPLS uh, labels that were assigned by LDP for this LSP. The control packets are obviously here, we'll see, or, or we see that are encapsulated in the MPLS. Uh, this shows you what the packets will contain, um, shows the uh, source address of R1, the destination address, this 127.0064 address, the UDP port, and it will contain both R1 and R4's discriminator, which represents the BFD session for this particular LDP signaled LSP. Okay. Um, so now once they do that, um, they will now, uh, they will... They will exchange these packets back and forth. Notice that, oh, well, we don't show it, but uh, R4 will send control packets like it did earlier, um, um, and they'll do that back and forth as described in those RFCs, okay, to make sure that session is up and allow them to detect when a neighbor is down, when a, uh, a BFD neighbor is down. Along with that, um, what you should know, uh, and as described in the RFCs, is that BFD only checks the data plane of an LSP. 
it doesn't check the control plane of an LSP. The you know the uh, check the um, synchronization between the control plane on R1 and the data plane on R1. So uh, what what uh, the RFC specifies is that you should use a periodic LDP ping, which we do by default every 60 seconds. R1 will send an uh, MPLS echo request, an MPLS ping to R4, and R4, R4 will respond as before. By default, we do that every 60 seconds, and you can adjust that with uh, with uh, some settings under uh, LDP OAM, which we'll see here in a second. So quickly, we'll do a BFD demonstration. First, I want to show you R4. So remember, if we look back, I've got R1 and R4 are what I'm uh, concerned about. If I look at R4 first, I just want to just show you here that on R4, here's R4. If I go under Edit Protocols, Protocols uh, MPLS, I um, and I write it to show. I simply have MPLS turned on, right? If I go uh, up and go to Edit LDP. If I say show, I've simply got LDP turned on, which this should establish um, uh, some MPLS LSPs to all the remote destinations in the network. Um, if I say run show route table inet.3, here I've got LSPs built to all these facts, okay, all these destinations here, right? All these 193 addresses. So those are up, and I didn't uh, turn on. Notice what I want you to show. See, I want you to see if I say run show BFD session. Oh, this is left over from my my testing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. This is not left over from my testing. I do have a BFD session up, and I want to do show you this. If I say show uh, pipe no more, I want to pipe it one more time, and I say uh, match on B. BFD. Notice there's no configuration for BFD in, on R4 at all. But I do have a BFD session up. Okay, So we automatically are, are looking for uh, BFD setup messages, that, uh, that uh, bootstrap message by default, just by turning on MPLS, uh, uh, just by turning it on LDP. If I say um, run show version, so just show you what version I'm on, it's version 12.3 R2.5. R, uh, if I now go to R1, run show version, I also have the same version of software here. Okay, So um, on the remote side, you, on the egress route, you don't have to turn on anything special for L, L, uh, BFD. If I go under Edit uh, Protocols LDP, I want to show you the configuration I have here for OAM. For first off, I've turned on... Um, Hold on. If I say show for the whole thing, I'll show you everything. Here I've got LDP turned on. Okay. The results of turning this on is here I've got run show uh, route table inet.3. I want to show you that I do have LSPs built to all these remote destinations. This is the one that is actually for R4 here. Okay, so um, I've uh, built an MPLS LSP down to R4, or it, an LSP has been built to that from R4 to me. So this is R4, 3.2. Okay, now if I look again at my configuration for LDP uh, for under OAM, this is where we turn on BFD um, uh, by bi directional forwarding detection. Okay, here I go under OAM under LDP. I need to specify the fact that I want to turn on the BFD session for. So it has to have, I have to have a an existing fact established. No, and I would do that by just looking under INET3 for it. Um, I would need to turn it on each individually, which is what I'm showing you here. I'm going to show you another option here in a second. But here I'm turning it on individually for that particular fact. And then um, here I've, I can set I have to set as a minimum a minimum interval here um, of some value. The default interval is every 50 milliseconds. I've turned it on for every 300 milliseconds. Uh, back on R4, notice I didn't set anything. R4 is set uh, automatically for 
50 milliseconds. So uh, as part of the RFC, they negotiate to the, the slower interval. So you'll notice when I look at the session that their BFD session is to 300 seconds. If I say run show BFD session here on R4, they negotiated to the transmit interval of every 300 seconds with a detect time of 900 based on the multiplier. So you can change the multiplier, change the minimum intervals, all that good stuff here under this configuration. But the trick is you need to specify which individual FEC you want to turn it on for. Um, and then you can also adjust the LSP ping interval. There are other options too. If I say set OAM BFD liveness, question mark, there's other options. I can change the version. I can change my transmit interval. I can change my multiplier. Um, I can set for no adaptation, which adaptation is described in those RFCs. We don't get into that here. Um, set my minimum intervals. Uh, my failure action, by default, we simply log when a failure happens, a uh, BFD failure happens. But if you want, um, you can set it to do a few things. One, it can, hit question mark here. Sorry, guys. Sorry, you all. Okay, so if you would like it, BFD, to do something other than just a log, the fact that a session came down and you would actually like it to affect the behavior of the LSP. You can set the failure actions here. Okay, under the BFD live detection, you can set a failure detection of either remove the next hop because you might have uh, multiple equal cost next hops or you may uh, remove uh, the route altogether um, if that uh, uh, particular BFD session goes down. So it's up to you. Um, on, on how you'd like to do that. Uh, one thing I'd like to show uh, here at, uh, is that uh, my example showed a, uh, a, a single FEC. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to load another config, load override. Uh, sorry here. Let's load another config. Load override. Well, um, uh, let's see. LBP. Load this config here, which the only difference, if I say show pipe compare, is that I'm using a policy instead of a fact, an ingress policy. So if I show my policy, because if the idea here is okay, if I have hundreds of um, sessions that I want to set up with different remote PEs. Do I need to spe specify each one individually? The answer is not necessarily. We have another option with policy options. So if I say show policy, well, let me just, uh, if I say uh, show policy options, policy statement, POAM, here's I have an LDP um, uh, L -O -M policy statement that looks for a specific set of uh, of prefixes. So here I'm just going to match on slash 32 prefixes okay, that fall in the range of 193, 168. If we remember, okay, so this will match on everything in my inet.3 table. So if I say show, run show route table inet.3, here that'll match on all these. These are all slash 32 facts. Okay, they all start with 193, 168. That's what the policy is going to match on. So once um, we do that, I set up that policy. I need to apply that under protocols uh, LDP. If I go here, I look here. Instead of the FEC listing, I have the ingress policy listed. Now by committing it, you're going to notice something different. Okay. Okay. So after I've committed the policy, I'll now see that um, and this takes some time to show up, but eventually um, you have uh, you know sessions to all of the remote FECs. They all use 127.0064, but they'll be sent over the MPL the associated MPLSE LSP for those FECs. Um, And that's just another way to establish it. Here we see the uh, actual prefix here under the um, this is the fact that we were uh, referring to. Okay, by the or at least the policy refers to. Okay.
And that's it. Hope that uh, helps with turning on uh, BFD for your MPLS LSPs. Um, talk to you next time. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.